The first thing you should know about me is that I am inordinately fixated on time. And for years, I obsessed over my clocks and watches to make sure that they were all in exact sync with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's one o'clock time signal. I'm more relaxed now. And while I still live in a house full of interesting clocks, I'm less diligent. So clearly, I'm interested in watches and have owned several nice ones, including the one that most clearly displays my style, the Movado Museum Watch, the most minimal of all watches. And attentive viewers will have noticed that I've been wearing an Apple Watch in recent videos. Longtime subscribers will remember that I wore a Pebble for a time. Now this is the Galaxy Watch Active 2. I don't find watches really comfortable, but in the fall of 2019, I convinced myself that I should own an Apple Watch, the fifth generation. The constant display, the health aspects, along with fall detection swayed me, and many of the people that I admire wear one. It does a bunch of useful stuff. I now leave my phone in one place in my home, and all of my texts and calls appear on my wrist. I use Siri to time stuff and remind me of things. And it is unexpectedly incenting me to walk more. It also feels kind of fashionable. A few weeks ago, Samsung Canada suggested I might like to try the Samsung Galaxy Active 2 watch. They lent me the 40mm Cloud Silver version, Under Armour Edition, to review. The Active 2 is available in 40 and 44 millimeter versions with or without LTE capability, and that allows it to connect directly to the mobile phone network. This model connects to the internet through the Note 10 Plus using Bluetooth. Now, Samsung makes a second line of watches that are not active. They're more expensive and larger. The big difference is the bezel. The standard model has a physical bezel that you use to navigate apps and select widgets. On the active, it's a virtual dial. I prefer that. I'm comparing the active 2 to the Apple Watch 5 with the space gray aluminum case. Both are more or less the entry level. It's the 40 millimeter with the Milanese loop band. That's a custom set. The Samsung strap is a standard watch strap like those used on most watches. The Apple strap is fairly proprietary, although there are some third parties that make them. Now, over the last few months, I've incorporated the Apple Watch into my lifestyle. It shows me the time with the always-on display. And for the most part, I interact with it using Siri. I use it to read and sometimes respond to texts and iMessages with other iPhone users. Hey Siri, call Kim. To answer and initiate phone calls. Calling Kim Warbeck, mobile. For directions, using Apple Maps. To check the weather. It's not looking good today. Down to minus eight degrees and snowing. To set timers to remind me of things. Okay. 12 minutes and counting. To find friends using Apple's Find My app. And for health and fitness, tracking my activities and monitoring my heartbeat. I've tried many third-party apps to turn my Philips Hue lights on and off and to manage music playback with Spotify. The Apple Watch uses their Apple Watch OS. Samsung uses their proprietary Tizen OS. It's not compatible with Google's Wear OS. The Apple Watch is 10.7 millimeters deep and weight varies among sizes and styles. This one is under 31 grams. The Apple Watch display is a rectangular 324 by 394 pixels. The Samsung is 10.9 millimeters, and this version weighs 26 grams. The Active Watch display is round, 360 by 360 pixels. Apple claims a waterproofing of 50 meters, which the fine print defines as shallow water swimming but not water skiing or scuba diving. Samson's ingression protection is 6'8", which generally means to a depth of about 3 meters for about 30 minutes. Also no scuba diving. 
My first challenge is to find a pleasing watch face. I prefer something minimal. On the Apple Watch, that's numerals. In the active mode, the sweep hand appears. The little bubble shows new messages. Other alerts appear at the top of the screen. Compared to the Apple, Samsung has an overwhelming selection of faces, so it took some time to find and select one. This is called mono. Now, I actually prefer this elegant display over numerals, which feels less refined. Watch faces and design are, of course, pretty personal. Now, both can be set to an always-on display. The transition from standby to active is less obvious with Apple. For the most part, these two devices are remarkably similar, sometimes to a surprisingly small level of detail, but in other ways, they're very What's different. Samsung's Siri equivalent dollars. is called Bixby, the is but it isn't cents. equivalent. Oh, I'm not able to calculate that. Although Bixby works fine on the phone, I needed help to get it working on the watch. That took an unsuccessful 20-minute support call and a visit to the Samsung store, where a helpful, more knowledgeable tech had me up and running in less than five minutes. The Active 2 can answer calls and initiate phone calls either Hi, from the contact What's list up? or using the Bixby voice assistant. Got it. I'm calling Tim Warobook Mobile. You can also use Bixby to send text messages. Hi there. Should I make reservations for dinner? The Samsung Watch lets you know that it's lost contact with the phone. That's the icon at the top of the screen. I wish Apple would do that. Swipe down for the control panel. There's airplane mode and theater mode, as well as water lock activation. Alerts appear as a yellow dot at 9 o'clock. Swipe right to see and delete them. From the clock face, swipe left to check activity status, start an activity, check your heart rate, check the weather, set timers, and play music. You can also use the virtual bezel for faster navigation. These swipe left items are called widgets. Up to 15 can be active. Most widgets are activity and health related. Press the lower button to see the apps, which display in a circle for easy navigation using the virtual bezel, or as a list. There are a few native Samsung apps, but third-party apps can be installed from the Samsung Watch App Store on the phone. There is a Hue app for the Samsung Watch, but it's not provided by Philips. The Spotify apps are similar, but the Samsung version can play music and download tunes on the watch. The Apple Watch can't download or play, but it manages playback on other devices including the Galaxy Watch. There's no Samsung equivalent to Apple Maps. Google Maps on the Note 10 does not send alerts to the watch. And there's no Find Friends and Stuff equivalent. The Apple Watch is a remote control for the iPhone's camera. Although Samsung has promised an ECG app, in December 2019, only the Apple has one. Apple alerts you when you're in an environment with high sound levels that might damage your hearing. There's a women's cycle tracking app on the Apple. And although I've had false alarms, the Apple Watch will detect a fall and alert your emergency contacts. A triple tap on the lower key starts the Samsung SOS call to a contact you specify. Both watches can find the phone and vice versa. When a new timer, set a timer is set, for 10 minutes. both cancel any running timers, but only Bixby tells you it's canceling the other one. Okay, I canceled your timer and started a new one. And Samsung's widgets provide more health and activity capabilities than Apple. Now, I'm not sure what the stress feature is supposed to monitor, but nice that it's low. Samsung's unique health app is Sleep, if you wear the Samsung while you're sleeping, it provides an interesting chart of your sleep pattern. I also found Samsung to be much less finicky for tracking activity, although like Apple, you can manually start it. 
and they both have long lists of supported activities. A skating isn't one. I chose other. When I'm going for a walk, the Samsung starts and stops tracking on its own with much less fuss than the Apple, which requires more attention and interaction. Samsung also provides more detail after you've completed an activity. If you need a reminder to get up from your desk once in a while, both do that. The Active 2 provides a daily briefing, a feature so carefully hidden I should describe it as an Easter egg. In Apps Permissions, find Daily Briefing and turn on Sensors. Then, in Advanced Settings, you select Automatic Times or configure your own times for the briefing. At the appointed time, the watch beeps, and you can check out your daily stats and tomorrow's weather. Both watches can be locked. I found that a little more aggravating with the Samsung as it locked up even while I was wearing it. Apple locks only when you take it off. And Bixby on the watch can be quite limited, even compared to the Samsung phone. On the phone, Bixby can identify music, not on the watch. On the phone, Bixby can find places and get directions, not on the watch. Battery life is, or can be, short. Apple claims 18 hours. I charge it while I'm sleeping. By the time the day is done, it's down to about 40%. Samsung claims a longer battery life, and while many reviews echo that, wasn't my experience. Wearing the Samsung watch turned into a daily recharging challenge. If I go to sleep at 11 with the watch fully charged, after 8 hours of sleep it's under 60%, which translates to less than 9 hours remaining time. Two hours later, after a 40 minute session on a treadmill, we're at 40% with less than 6 hours to go and at about 1 p.m. as power level went under 20%, the display turned off, and the watch transitioned to power-saving mode. And even in that mode, less than four hours left. Teardowns suggest that the Apple battery has a higher capacity. For those who are interested, both watches can capture the stills from the screen, with Samsung swipe right while you hold the home key. View the screens in the gallery, where you can send them to the phone. They're saved in the Pictures Watch subfolder. On the Apple, press both keys and the screen is automatically transferred to the Photos app on the phone. Now, there's some suggestion that you can use the Samsung Watch with an iPhone. That limits its functionality even further. And of course, that doesn't make it compatible with Apple things like iMessages, Maps, or Find. There are some things that just are not easier with a watch. I didn't sign up for Samsung Pay because I found Apple Pay on the watch to be clumsy and slow. And Apple offers to unlock my Mac when my phone is close. That's also slower than the real thing. And the bottom line, they are more similar than different. And while the Samsung is the somewhat lesser device, they both have features that I'd like to see on the other. Your choice of which to get is likely much more dependent on your phone and other devices than one or other specific feature or capability. Now, I am going to miss this elegant device on my arm. I'll also miss the sleep report, but like much fitness tracking, it only takes a few weeks to understand what your numbers are. After that, its main use is to find anomalies in your behavior and to analyze long-term trends. If you do have questions or comments, I enjoy interacting with you, so post your relevant questions and civil comments below. One more thing. If you are the subscribing type, please click on my cartoon avatar to join us.